are um, where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So we're going to do completing the square problems the same way, same process. The only difference is that it is going to give us irrational numbers. So um, for the first warm up problem, um, it asks you what are the values of x that satisfy the equation? This right here, as you guys can remember, you can put in the Desmos calculator and it will give you two answers. So your two answers are where it crosses the, so if you have a parabola, your two answers is where it crosses the X. Say that this is the X axis, this is the Y. Okay, so your two answers will be where it crosses the X. So some of the answers um, before we would get like, say this would be X equals five. And then this over here would be X equals negative one. And those are the two answers you would get as your roots or your zeros, um, whatever you wanna call it. Um, <clears throat> so these are rational numbers. Those are numbers you're used to. If you look at these answer choices, A, B, C, and D, these are all irrational numbers because you cannot take the square root of five or the square root of three. So you're gonna solve this by completing the square. So you had directions before that taught you how to complete the square. And the first step was to create a box. So you're gonna move, and you wanna write these down again, because I think some of you guys have forgotten them from break. So you're gonna move C to the right side. So remember this is A, this is B, this is C. So you're gonna move C to the right side and that creates a uh, basically an area for you to put a box, okay? So you're gonna create two boxes. So you create two boxes on both sides of the equal sign. So that means that you'll have x squared plus four x now. And instead of having that negative one, you're gonna move C, so you're gonna have a box. When you move C to the other side, you're going to add, because you do the opposite of what's being done, and then you're gonna put the other box on the other side of the equal sign. Because whatever you do to one side, you put you do to the other side. So step three is, what do I put in the box? Well, you don't know what to put in the box until you use the equation B divided by two squared. And that's what goes in this box and in this box. So keep in mind B divided by two squared, because this is what's gonna make this a perfect square trinomial. So we're gonna take B, which we go back up to our equation. So B is four. So I'm taking B and I'm going to take four, divide it by two and then square it. So four divided by two is two and then squared would give you four. So that means in each of these boxes, I'm gonna put four. Okay, the next step is to factor the left side. So when we factor this, remember that you have to multiply to get this number 
and then you have to add to get this number. So you need two numbers that do that. So add numbers that add to get four and then multiply to get four. So two numbers that add to get four are gonna be two plus two. And two numbers that also multiply to get four are gonna be two times two. So that means when I factor this, my factors are gonna be x plus two and x plus two. So those are my factors. Okay, because you're factoring the left side. And then you're going to simplify the right side. So all you do is whatever operation it has. Since it was positive four, we're going to do one plus four, and that equals five. So factor the left side, simplify the right side. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and I'm gonna rewrite it down at the bottom so that I have room. So I'm gonna bring this down. So when I bring it down, I'm gonna have the same, I'm gonna have X plus two and X plus two equals five. Well, if x plus two times x plus two, we have the same thing. So if you have the same exact thing, you can just put x plus two squared because you have two of the factors that are the same. And that's what you want. So when you factor the left side, you want the factors to be the same. You wanna get a two and a two or a four and a four, or a five and a five, you want them to be the same, because that means it's a perfect square trinomial. And then you can um, write out your factor with a little squared sign. And then we're gonna put equals five. All right, next step, number five, our last step, technically, is going to be to take the square root. And you're gonna take the square root because squaring something and the square root of something is the opposite. So take the square root of both sides. So when you take the square root of both sides, remember if I had a one and a one, right? The opposite of one is negative one. That makes that cancel out. Just like if I had, um, let's say I have four squared. Oops, I'm making a square root. If I had four squared, the opposite of a square is taking the square root. So four squared is going to give you four. So the squared, and the square root cancel out and it just leaves you with four. Because even if I did four squared and took the square root of it and did it out the long way, I would still get four. So that just cancels it out. So going back to our problem, we're gonna take the square root of this because it's gonna cancel out the squared so that we can solve for X. So it's gonna be X plus two because the whole point of taking the square root is just to cancel this out. But if you take the square root on the left side, you have to take the square root on the right side, which we don't know the square root of five. So it's gonna be irrational, but we put that plus or minus sign and then we put five. Okay, um, next step to get the X by itself is just to move the two. And we all know how to move the two because it, we just subtract it, right? So we take and we subtract it, but you can't subtract it from the square root of five. So it's gonna be negative, negative two plus or minus 
the square root of five. And that's the most we can simplify it because you can't do any operation with a number that's irrational and then a whole number. So that would be your answer. So if you go back up here to the answer choices, you'll figure out which one matches, okay? So all of these, they look like um, equal signs with like, it kind of looks like an equal sign like this, but that's not what that is. It is a plus or minus sign. So we would pick C as our answer choice. But there's also a trick to this because what I want you guys to do for me is I want you guys to underneath where you wrote the answer, I want you guys to write out X equals negative two plus square root of five. And then I want you to write X equals negative two minus the square root of five, because that's how you get your two equations or your two, you see how I have the two answers for X? That's how you get those. So I'm going to show you why I did all of this and, um, and why your answers are looking like this, okay? Because if you were to put this in the graphing calculator, like we were using Desmos before, you would not get answers like this, okay? Your answers are not going to look like that anymore. So I'm going to pull up the Desmos calculator and show you what happens. So let me see. Share. Last for one second. Oh, here. Okay, so I entered the equation in like you would do on Desmos. And I know you guys thought like, oh, that's the greatest thing ever. Um, whenever I first showed this to you and you were like, oh, we can get the answers that way. Yes, you can get the answers that way. But look at these answers, okay? This is the equation that I just did for the warm up. So the equation that I just did for the warm up is going to be, we got the answer x equals negative two, right? Plus the square root of five. And then we got x equals negative two minus the square root of five. Those were our answers. So in, in a multiple choice question, if you had this, you would not be able to figure out what the answers are because you don't see this on the calculator. So what you wanna do is, if you're looking for an answer, when I scroll over this, this says that the answer is negative 4.2, right? And then this one says 0.2. Okay, what you, can, what you can do to check these is you can figure out what the square root of five is. So to figure out what the square root of five is, you can use your calculator, a regular calculator, um, and do the square root of five. Okay, so if you do the square root of five, hope you guys have calculators with you. What do you get as a square root of five?
Anybody know? Okay, hypothetically, you square root of five, you guys should have gotten, let me see, so who got this? Square root of five, yes, Dylan, good job. Okay, so you can convert the square root of five into 2.2. So I want you to write this down. So the square root of five is 2.2. .2. That makes it easier on you so that when you do, if you want to put this in the calculator and check your answers, that you can do that. So then you would just do regular math and you would take negative two and you would subtract 2.2 .2 and you would get Am I doing that right? Okay. Um, and you get 0 0.2. And then for this one up here, you have, you're going to add. Um, so when you add this, you get, you have negative 2 plus 2.2. .2. And that's going to give you 0.2. I think I didn't make this one a negative because it should have been 4.2. Let me change it to a negative. Hold on. So, oh, it's not. Okay. So, 2.2. So, yeah, this should have been a negative 4.2. Sorry about that. So, this is 4. Okay. So now you can actually see these on your graph over here. So if you look, you can see, okay, this is 0.236, even though my answer choices are saying negative two plus the square root of five. And then this one over here is negative 4.2, even though the answer choice said negative two minus the square root of five. So the red is the basically the irrational form. So it might be a good idea for you guys to write that down. So you know that it, it can be irrational. Okay, and then the decimals, remember decimals are rational. So these are rational. So your answer choices can come in um, both of these. So on your test, um, I do know that you have two questions that have irrational um, numbers on them. Okay, so let's look at the next slide, let's see. Okay, so the next slide is basically showing you oops, what I have already shown you. It's saying that um, once you, basically once you complete the square, you're gonna come up with a number squared, then you're gonna take the square root of both sides that cancels out, right? Then you have that plus or minus square root of two, and that gives you the two equations. Okay, so you're gonna get two equations from that as well. So just so that you guys can see it, this is two answers, okay? Your two answers are gonna be negative three plus the square root of two, and then negative three minus the square root of two. And then you should be able to check that and for this one down here, you would get 
negative 4.4, which you would see over here. And then for this one up here, you would get negative 1.5 or 1.6, sorry. So it's just showing you another example of how you can approximate them um, so that you can see them. And whenever you guys have tests or quizzes, it's okay to leave them as, you know, in the hundredth place. So you can just have um, one number after the decimal. So that's okay, you're allowed to do that. Okay, let me clear this. So, all right, so part of, let's see if I skip something. Oh, okay. Um, part of your final exam, we've already done completing this square, but um, a lot of people were confused, like what is H? Um, we didn't know what H was. And this says an equation and the first step in its solution are shown. So you have x squared plus three x minus nine, and it's equal to zero. It says what value of h is used to solve the equation by the method of completing the square. So anytime it says completing the square, you know you're gonna want to have boxes or spaces, right? So this h represents the box or space. And make sure you write down this equation in step one, because you are gonna see these H's again, okay? I don't know why they use H because this is essentially A, B, and C. Um, and you're supposed to, like the first step would be to figure out what to put in the box. Well, we put, they already moved C for us for the, set, the first step. So right here, the first step, they moved the nine. It was negative, now it's positive. Now we have to figure out what do I put in for H, okay? So when it says what value of H is used to solve the equation, we're not solving it. You don't have to do the all the steps where you have to factor and then simplify and then take the square root, da, 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 da. All it's asking you to do is figure out what to place in the box. And that's all you're doing. So what's a place in the box? We're gonna look at this. We're gonna find out what B is. B is three divided by two and then square. Okay, so um, your answer choices will be written like this, so you would pick this answer choice. This is what would go inside the box. So on both sides, you would put three over two squared, three over two squared. So, or it can be written, if you do square these, the square has to be distributed. So you distribute, distribute that and you get nine over four. So it can be written either way, but most likely it will be written out this way, just to emphasize the fact that it is B divided by two squared. Okay, so make sure you know that they can use H's instead of C's. All right, next one. Okay, next one is just, um, I'm gonna go over two completing the square problems with you guys. And then the next slide is wherever you're going to um, basically go on Nearpod and um, do an error analysis, which when I tell you guys to do error analysis, I tell you, don't look at their problems first. Don't compare their problems. You're always going to work it. You're going to take the equation, work it out yourself, then go back and compare your answer and what you did to what the person did, and then figure out what where the errors are because it's too complicated if you're just staring at 
the, the work that they did if you don't know the process of how to do the steps yourself. Um, so let me do these examples with you first. Okay, so number one, we know the steps and we've written out the steps. So we know that we have, um, we have x squared plus four x plus one equals zero. I look and I see, okay, I still have C, so I gotta move C. That was part of your steps. So you move C over and that becomes negative because basically it's the opposite. So then I'm gonna rewrite it. And now I have the space where I can put my square. So if I have one square on the left side, I'm putting one square on the right side and I still have that negative one. Now, what goes in your squares, always what goes in your squares is that B. B is right here. So you'll have B divided by two squared. So four divided by two is gonna give you two and then two squared is what number you're gonna put in these two boxes. So you have four and you have four. So the next step is you're gonna factor these. You want something to add to be four and then multiply to be four. Okay, so this one should be easy. Remember, we're gonna get two of the same kind of numbers. Um, so add to be four, you got two plus two, multiply to be four, two times two. So I know that my factors are gonna be x plus two and x plus two. And then I simplify the right side. So four minus one is gonna give you three. And then x plus two squared, because remember we wanna get a squared out of this because the whole point of doing the b divided by two squared is to make a perfect square trinomial. That means that this factors to be a perfect square. That way you can take the square root of it. So last step, when you see the squared, you need to know that that's the opposite. So you're gonna do the opposite of squaring something, which is taking the square root. So that makes the squared and the square root go away. So you're left with x plus two equals plus or minus the square root of three. Okay, and then to get x by itself, you just do the opposite. So you're adding two, which means that you're gonna subtract two on this side. And you cannot literally subtract two because this is a whole number and this is an irrational number. So this is what you would get for an answer, okay? But remember there's two answers. So the two answers are going to be plus and then minus. So you wanna write out x equals negative two plus the square root of three, because it says plus or minus, and then x equals negative two minus the square root of three. And those would be your two answers of where your x crosses the quadratic, um, for the quadratic equation on the um, x-axis. So these are your two zeros that you solve for number one. And then, and then you can approximate this to get a decimal, that's fine. Um, and I'm gonna, let me go back and show you. So four x plus one, I'm gonna do that with number two. I'm gonna go back and show you with number two. Um, number two, we'll do it the same way. You move the C over. So move the C to the opposite side. So that makes a 
basically a, like a space or square that you can plug in a number into. And then this is going to equal negative 18. But then we also have to put another square because if, there, if there's a square on this side, there has to be a square on this side. Then we're gonna take B, which B is negative 10. You cannot just put 10, you have to put negative 10. So negative 10 divided by two. And I'm following the steps that I gave you. I, I just have them memorized. So um, you can just look at your steps and follow them until you have them memorized as well. So negative 10 divided by two gives you negative five. Negative five squared is gonna give you 25. So that means in these little boxes, I'm gonna put 25. Okay. And then I'm gonna factor the left side and then I'm going to simplify the right side. So factoring it, um, it's negative five and negative five. So that's gonna give you negative five, X minus five squared. And then with the 25, you're gonna get seven. So negative 18 plus 25 is gonna give you seven. And then you take the square root. So we'll take the square root of that, take the square root of that. That cancels out. So you have X minus five equals plus or minus seven. And then in order to get our two numbers, we have to add five to both sides. So then you have X equals five plus or minus, oops, forgot the square root. The square root is seven. So, and then that would be your answer. And then you can break them down into two answers because you have plus or minus. So you just need to know that you can take those um, irrational numbers like we get for our answers and you can make them rational by converting them to decimals um, in order to get like an approximation for what your zeros are. So your next step um, that you're gonna do for me is you are going to do this Nearpod and I don't think you'll have time to do it in class but um, the error analysis Nearpod is what you're going to um, complete and then um, you are graded on it. And then um, that's it. That's all that we have for today. So um, you guys can go ahead and work on that. And then um, if you have any questions, you can email me or you can um, send me a remind message. So I was just saying that um, if you guys have any questions about the Nearpod that you are working on, um, you can send me remind questions or you can send me an email, but this is the code. It's linked into the PowerPoint and um, there's a link right here or you can go to the website and then type in the code. And that's for a participation grade for me, which is a classwork grade. So if you have um, any questions, just email me. If not, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye guys.